Dr. Jen Gunter is an obstetrician and gynecologist, New York Times columnist, and best-selling author. She's been called Twitter's resident gynecologist and has used the platform to expose unscientific wellness advice and to debunk potentially harmful myths about women's health. And I'm so happy to have you back on City Line, Dr. Gunter. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be back. You can come back anytime you want. So your book, The Vagina Bible, was published in 2019. And it was to counter the amount of false information on the web about female health. So why has this become such an important part of what you write about? Well, it was amazing to me it, how many times, you know, I would write articles about vaginal health or and things that would go viral be seen by a lot of people. And yet I would still be debunking the same myths over and over again in, uh, in the office. And, you know, these myths are not sort of new. There may be variations on what was around 100 years ago or even 1,000 years ago. And I just thought, you know, women need a textbook. They need a, an ability to sort of step back from all of the chaos and the advertising online and be able to go to a trusted source. Now, while you were promoting your book, Twitter advertisements were blocked for inappropriate language. So what is it? Is the vagina part the inappropriate part? Yeah, so they let me tweet about it, but my publisher in the U.S., Kensington, all their promoted tweets for um, for the book were, you know, not allowed. So, uh, you know, and the I think the, the bad word was vagina and uh, uterus and possibly gynecologist. I don't remember now, but I think it was, it was just so ridiculous. It's so weird how we're, you know, allowed to walk around in this world and procreate and reproduce and talk about sex and money and all these other things, but we cannot say vagina, you know? And when you can't say these words, it really does make it so that people think there's something shameful about having one. Absolutely. I mean, saying vagina should be no different than saying chin or nose. They're just body parts. And, you know, when you say they're shameful, you're saying that there's something wrong with them or there's something wrong that you're doing with them or that they need to be policed in some way. And so I think the most important thing, you know, if there was only one message that came out from my advocacy in the book, the idea that everybody should be saying the word vagina and vulva. We don't want to forget the vulva and the clitoris uh, more often. That's right, especially clitoris. <laughs> a few weeks ago, there was a viral video going around on how cheap wine can give you a yeast infection. So what are your thoughts on advice about the things we see on social media? Well, yeah, so most of the things on social media are just the same version of the stuff that we hear in the office. It's just for some reason that particular content has gone viral. And there has been a myth about wine and yeast infections as long as I can remember. Drinking too much cheap wine can give you a yeast infection. And why someone sort of thinks cheap wine is even worse, I don't know, because you can have great cheap wine. Uh, but uh, the, so the idea that this person believed and was probably told by their gynecologist, so I think that's an important point, is that these myths come often from trusted sources. Mm -hmm. Was that because wine has sugar that that will feed the yeast in your vagina and give you yeast infections? But the vagina is normally a high sugar environment. It's filled with sugar. That's how it feeds the good bacteria. And sometimes there's even more sugar in your vagina than your blood. And the idea that sugar uh, changes the uh, level of sugar in your vagina, sugar you take by mouth, has actually been tested. They did a study where women took a very large amount of sugar by mouth and they measured the sugar in their blood and in their vagina and there was no change. So we know it's not the case, you know, have a glass of wine if you want and uh, don't stress out about it. Oh my gosh, that's really interesting. Okay, your next book is due out in May, and we are so happy to be able to reveal the cover today. It's called The Menopause Manifesto. In this book, you're going to be talking about the myths and the misunderstandings around menopause, and I'm sure there are so many. Why did you think it was important to write this book? Well, you know, I realized along the way that, you know, I, I, you know, I, I went through, I started my menopause transition, you know, in my mid forties and completed menopause around the age of 50. And it was not so much a big deal for me, 
but not because I didn't have symptoms or problems, but because I knew what those were and what to do about it. And I was informed. And I realized as I write more and more, it's this advantage of having been a gynecologist and being a doctor from a very early age. You know, I, I, my first, I was 20 in my first medical school class. So I've had quality information about my body and my health for well over half my life. I can't even remember back to when I didn't have that information. And so I really thought, you know, women deserve, there's no reason that doctors or gynecologists should be repository. You know, we should be the repository of all that information. Medicine isn't that hard, a lot of it. It's just, there's a lot of it. So I wanted to get that information out to women. Now, I don't want to give away all of the goodies in the book because we want our viewers to buy the book, but can you just give me one, like one myth about menopause that, uh, that you'd like to clear up? Well, that menopause is a disease. And I think that's how it's been uh, framed in our Western society uh, and many cultures is that there's something wrong. You know, this idea that because, um, you know, uh, men continue to make sperm, but women stop making um, eggs, that there's some kind of problem. And it's an actually an evolutionary thing, menopause. It's, uh, it's just another phase of life. It's no more, menopause is no more a disease than being, man, being a man is a disease. Right. Okay. Listen, we need to really get into uh, menopause for sure. I'm, we're going to have you back on a, a gazillion times to really talk through this. And I love that you uh, have written this book. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Gunter. So looking forward to so having much. you back on CityLine in May to talk more about the Menopause Manifesto.